In the vast universe of science fiction, few ideas have sparked the imagination quite like the warp drive in Star Trek. It's one of the most iconic concepts in the Star Trek universe that ignites our imaginations. The warp drive powers the USS Enterprise and the starships of the United Federation of Planets, allowing them to travel across the galaxy at faster than light speeds. At the very least, the warp drive concept in Star Trek fuels our dreams that faster than light travel might one day be within our reach. It isn't just a mere plot device based solely on wishful thinking. It was built on a surprisingly thoughtful mix of speculative scientific theories, some fictional engineering, and the practical needs of sci-fi storytelling. The writers gave the USS Enterprise and the other Federation starships a believable system. It's a mix of antimatter reactors, warp cores, dilithium crystals, nacelles, and magnetic fields, creating a theoretical warp bubble that bends space rather than just trying to move through it. Understanding how these components work together not only gives us a greater appreciation of the show's depth, but also a glimpse at one of the most mind-bending concepts in theoretical physics. At the heart of a Star Trek starship is the warp core, the vessel's beating heart. It's described as a matter-antimatter reactor, an idea that is already loosely grounded in real physics. When matter and antimatter collide, they annihilate one another, releasing energy according to Einstein's equation, E equals mc squared. Just one gram of antimatter, reacting with one gram of matter, would release about 1.8 times 10 to the power of 14 joules of energy. Enough energy to power the entire city of New York for several days. In Star Trek, the warp core generates power by injecting matter and antimatter into a reaction chamber, where they collide and produce staggering amounts of energy. But there's a problem. Antimatter is incredibly rare and is currently impossible to produce in any measurable quantities. Creating even a single gram would cost tens of trillions of dollars and require energy inputs beyond anything humanity can currently generate. Storing antimatter safely is another monumental challenge. It must be completely isolated from all normal matter, including the walls of its container, by using magnetic fields known as penning traps. Any physical contact would trigger instant annihilation. Star Trek solves this problem through the use of magnetic containment fields and plasma injectors that precisely control the reaction. The resulting energy is then directed into the warp coils housed inside the nacelles. These are the glowing structures that flank the ship like a pair of space wings. But before that can happen, it must first pass through one of the most mysterious and legendary components in all of fictional engineering, the dilithium crystal. Dilithium is a fictional element unique to the Star Trek universe, serving one essential function. It stabilizes the reaction between matter and antimatter, allowing for a controlled release of energy rather than a massive uncontrolled explosion. Dilithium is the magical sci-fi regulator that makes their warp drive and faster-than-light travel possible. Without it, the system would collapse or even detonate. There is no real-world equivalent to dilithium. But the idea of a crystalline structure capable of managing extreme energy flows isn't completely outside speculative material science. In the show Star Trek, Dilithium acts as both a filter and a conduit, focusing energy and channeling it into the warp nacelles, where the warp field is formed. Here is where the real sci-fi brilliance begins. The warp drive doesn't push the ship forward like a rocket, it bends space around the ship. This idea was revolutionary when Star Trek first aired, but decades later, it has found theoretical support in real physics and mathematics. The ship is surrounded by a warp bubble that contracts space in front and expands space behind it, letting the ship ride a wave of distorted space-time, effectively moving the ship faster than light without locally breaking the speed of light limit. 
From the crew's perspective, they aren't moving through space at all. Space is moving around them. This concept became legitimate scientific speculation when physicist Miguel Alcubierre published a paper in 1994 describing a solution to Einstein's field equations that allowed for such a warp bubble to exist. The model, now known as the Alcubierre drive, required vast amounts of negative energy or exotic matter. Miguel Alcubierre's initial calculations required more than the total mass energy of the observable universe. Later refinements, including NASA's Eagle Work studies and Eric Lentz's 2021 model, have lowered that figure to roughly the planetary mass of Jupiter. This is still far beyond anything humanity can hope to achieve. Still, Alcubierre's equations proved that warp travel doesn't necessarily violate general relativity. An astonishing validation of what Gene Roddenberry and the writers of Star Trek imagined decades earlier. In the Star Trek universe, the warp nacelles generate the warp field by energizing coils made of a fictional material called Veterium Cortinide. These coils create a subspace field that reduces the starship's effective mass. Once inside this field, the ship can accelerate to warp speed, measured on a logarithmic scale. Warp factor 1 equals the speed of light. Warp factor 9 is 1,516 times faster. Warp factor 10, also known as infinite velocity, places the spaceship everywhere in the universe at once. While none of this matches real physics, it gives the show's universe an internal consistency that turns its tech jargon into a believable system, rather than grade school science gibberish or nonsensical Hollywood physics. If we tried to build a warp engine today, we'd face challenges that border on the impossible. First is the antimatter problem. Producing just one gram would cost around $60 trillion and take decades with current technology. Storing it safely would require magnetic containment more precise than anything we have ever built. Then comes the energy needed to create a warp bubble. Even in the most optimistic revised Alcubierre models, the power requirements dwarf anything humanity can hope to produce. It's the equivalent of converting entire planets the size of Jupiter or Saturn into pure energy. We'd also need entirely new materials like dilithium crystals to regulate the energy output, and advanced superconducting systems capable of channeling this energy to manipulate the very fabric of space-time, something we've never achieved, even on a microscopic scale. As for the cost of building a full-scale Starship warp system, no real number exists because the project remains purely theoretical. But even conservative estimates suggest it would cost hundreds of trillions of dollars and centuries of development. And that assumes every scientific miracle from exotic matter, negative energy, advanced quantum field control and more turns out to even be possible. Yet the warp drive remains a symbol of what science fiction does best. It doesn't just entertain, it inspires. It presents problems we can't yet solve and dares us to try. The warp drive is impossible today and maybe will be forever. But it continues to push the limits of imagination and physics alike. Star Trek's warp drive may be fictional, but its impact on real science is genuine. It reminds us that some of our most amazing technological advancements started with a question, a dream, and even sometimes an inspiring sci-fi story.